Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. We have a lot to cover this week, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo had a successful weekend at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Anthony finished eighth after recording two top five finishes in both stage one and stage two. Let's check in with the driver for a post-race recap. Had a great car tonight, finished eighth here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Our Sim Seeds Camaro was definitely rolling to start the race. We drove up into the top five and maintained our track position throughout stage one. I think we actually even got up into the top three and finished stage two in the top five as well. Then to start of stage three, uh, the groove I had been running in, in the middle of the tire lanes had kind of went away just the way the rubber uh, laid down uh, affected the balance of our race car tremendously. I'm not sure. Uh, what we got to do to, to figure out how to adjust the car for that, um, to stay ahead of it, because it's definitely what I fought, um, cause they actually just drove around me on the bottom and I was hung out on the top, whereas restarts prior, I'd pass four or five cars on the top. Um, so that was difficult, but, uh, really proud of the effort by everyone on our team today. Drove back up to recover from that. I think we got up to seventh when we, uh, pitted that last time for the last restart and had a little bit of a hiccup on pit road. So we restarted, I think, outside the top 15 maybe, and we're able to drive all the way back up to eighth, but we had great speed in our uh, Richard Childress Racing number 21 Simpsey Chevrolet Camaro, like I said. Uh, we definitely uh, maybe fought a little bit, started stage three, got us behind, and just lost a lot of track position, but uh, felt like we, we got back up there, did all we could to, to uh, fight and recover at the end, so really proud of the team, and another NASCAR Xfinity Series race in the book. I got 11 le uh, three left on my schedule um, for the rest of the year, so we'll try to get a win in one of those, but uh, definitely some good momentum to carry, and really thankful for everyone's support, especially Sim Seats for coming on board this weekend here in Las Vegas, and we look forward to Talladega next weekend. Thank you. Up next for Anthony, high banks of Talladega Motor Speedway this Saturday, and you can catch all of the action on NBCSN at 4.30 Eastern Time. Connor Mozak was at Virginia International Raceway for a weekend of Trans Am TA2 racing for Scott Legacy Racing. On day one, he qualified fifth and finished the race in fifth, all of that in the rain. On day two, six different series competed in the same race where Connor started sixth in the TA class and brought home a 14th place finish after suffering some damage trying to get around some slower cars in another class. Up next for Connor, Cars Tour at Florence Motor Speedway this weekend, October 3rd. Jesse Love brought home a third place finish in the Arkham Menard Series West General Tire 150 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway's Bullring. Jesse qualified first, led 41 laps, and brought home a third place finish. Jesse holds a 16-point lead in the championship, heading to All-American Speedway on October 23rd. Jesse will run the Arkham Menard Series East race at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola, Florida on October the 10th. But up next for Jesse, Power Eye National Midgets at Tri-City Speedway in my hometown of Granite City, Illinois, this Friday and Saturday night. Joey East was also at Las Vegas Motor Speedway's bull ring for the Arkham Menard Series West General Tire 150. Joey had a great car and qualified second, but during the race, he suffered a loose wire on the alternator, causing the brake fans not to work, overheating the brakes. Joey fell back to seventh, but eventually the brakes cooled off and he was able to get back up to second but then the wire broke completely on a restart and the engine lost all power, ending his day. Up next for Joey, Arkham Menard Series West at Kern County Raceway Park on October the 23rd. Sam Butler was at Hickory Motor Speedway for twin 40 lap features. Sam qualified on the pole for race one and led every lap to capture his second win of the year. In race two, he had to start 10th due to the invert. At the drop of the green flag, the leaders collided in turn two, but Sam was able to avoid the wreck. He restarted in eighth and moved patiently through the field to take the lead mid-race and led to the finish, notching his second win of the night. Up next for Sam, back to Hickory Motor Speedway for the fall brawl 
on October 17th. Grant Thompson records his third win of the season at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell, Georgia, driving for Kurt Britt Motorsports. Grant was fastest in practice, won his heat race, sat on the pole, and led every lap in route to the win and carries the championship points lead into the final race of the season on October 10th. Gavin Graham made his first start of the year at Chris Motorsports Park in the number 19 Pro Truck for Kurt Britt Motorsports. Gavin had an axle come loose at the start of the heat race, resulting in a fourth place starting position for the feature. The young Lakeland, Florida driver battled hard and was inches from bringing home a third place finish, crossing the line in fourth. Up next for Gavin, Pro Trucks at Chris Motorsports Park on October 10th. Bryce Bizanson was at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval where his number seven Jefferson Racing Ford was fast all weekend. He was second in practice and qualified third out of 31 cars. Unfortunately, Bryce got caught up in another car's incident in the feature, ending his day early. Up next for Bryce, Yakima Speedway Fall Classic on October 3rd and 4th. Caden Honeycutt was at Big O Speedway where he was pulling double duty in both his Dirt Sport Mod and the Dirt Late Model. Caden won both heat races, earning him the 13th starting position in the Late Model where he finished third in the feature. In the Dirt Mod, he started ninth in the feature, took the lead early, and led every lap for his ninth win of the year. Let's check in with Caden for a post-race recap. What's up, everybody? Uh, it's 2 o'clock in the morning right now, and we are dead tired. But nonetheless, that's a trophy right there. Modified got the win tonight, won our heat race from ninth, uh, picked up eight spots to win our heat race, and started second in the A-Man and won in the mod, led every single lap, and... Uh, it was just a great car, man. We haven't lost a race in almost five races or so in this car, and it's just absolutely on a tear. And uh, we just we just figured it out, and I'm so glad we did. And the late model, it's actually on my truck outside. Uh, it's a little windy, but um, we finished. We won our heat race from six in our late model, started 13th in the feature based on track points, and was got up to the lead. And I just, the last couple restarts, I got the toe knocked in from pushing the tires and it couldn't enter the corner good enough. And uh, we ultimately just settled for third. But um, it was just a great night overall. Winning three out of four races tonight, I can't ask for anything better. So I'm so thankful for everybody, man. And just, uh, just, a great, just a great time. And hopefully see you guys back on next Saturday. We got football coming back up on Friday. So we'll be back racing Saturday this weekend. Up next for Caden, Sport Mods this weekend at Kennendale Speedway Park on October 2nd. He's going after another one of those big checks. Haley Constance was at Deming Speedway in her 600 micro sprint on Friday where she brought home a fifth place finish in the A-Main. Saturday's race was pushed to Sunday because of rain, but Haley was involved in an incident that forced her into the fence, ending her day early. Up next for Haley, Junior Hornets, Evergreen Speedway, October 3rd. Cassidy Hines was at Cheyenne Intermountain Speedway in her number 33 legend car, competing against some of the top drivers in the country, where she finished eighth in the A-Main that saw 18 cars take the green flag. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates, and remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite race face driver. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.